Deshaun Harris Smith will win Big Ten Freshman of the Year. You are a Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you for making us part of your day. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet. $5 $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Deshaun Harris Smith, the highly heralded recruit, will be the Big Ten Freshman of the Year for the Maryland Terrapins this basketball season. I've talked a little bit about basketball this week. I've talked a good bit about basketball this week because I thought it's been a good week to get into basketball since the Maryland Terrapins don't have a football game tomorrow and we can't talk about Northwestern until next week. So we have a bye this week in terms of football. So I thought it was a good time to get into all the different basketball news that's going around. We had We had media day for our basketball team, so there's a bunch of new nuggets and things to talk about for the basketball team. And the basketball season is a little bit over two weeks away, so we're going to look around and be like, oh, shoot, we play St. Mary's tomorrow in basketball. And I can't wait for that because I think we have an excellent team. And one of the guys it starts with is Deshaun Harris-Smith, the highly heralded recruit out of the DMV area going to one of the best basketball schools in the country last year and PVI out of Virginia. And I think Deshaun Harris-Smith will win the Big Ten Freshman of the Year Award. I think we're going to look at this guy going into his sophomore year. I don't know if he's going to declare for the draft. I have no idea. I really have to see more in terms of his talent overall and some of his abilities. He's obviously a really good player, but that's kind of for the scouts and all those people to decide. And not everyone understands that until you get to actually see him play live because he can put up 20 points per game and still scouts can look at him and be like, eh, we don't love him. He doesn't have the highest upside for the next level. And I'm not saying that's what Deshaun Harris Smith is, but I'm kind of unsure of what he brings in terms of an NBA player. But in terms of as a college basketball player, I think his game fits perfectly in terms of he can do everything on the court. He can score. I expect him to score this year for the Maryland Terrapins. I don't need him to be number one on our team in scoring or even number two, but I expect him to be a top three, four scorer on the team. I think for him to win the Big Ten Freshman of the Year award, I think he has to be the third, at least the third highest scorer on our team. Obviously, we have two preseason Big Ten players and Julian Reese and Jameer Young who are going to average a lot of points and have done so in the last years. And so I expect them to be one and two in terms of points. I expect Jameer Young to be one in points and assists. But I think Jameer Young can average around 16, maybe even can get to 17, maybe 15 points per game. But I think Deshaun Harris-Smith can dabble around 13, maybe 14 points per game. It all really depends on he does everything really well, except one thing that kind of sticks out. He's able to get to the basket. That's one thing I love. He's able to use his body really well. He's strong. He's a really good defender. I think he can guard a lot of different guys can guard one through three on the perimeter and he's strong enough at times if he gets stuck he can stay on a four and I think he moves his feet well defensively I think he's a really tough kid he's a competitive kid Kevin Willard often talks about that but the one thing that might hold him back is his shooting ability but he did shoot really well last year for PVI I think there was a stat that said he shot above 40 percent from three for PVI so If he continues to do that at Maryland, if he shoots anywhere from, let's say, over 33% from three at Maryland, 
this guy could be a problem. If he's able to space the ball and shoot the ball well, that's his biggest question mark of his game. But if he does that, I think he can realistically get to 13 to 14 points per game. Maybe he, maybe it's more like 11 or 12 or 10 points per game, but I can also see him getting like three assists. I've seen people talk about how good he is as a passer as well as scoring the ball. And then, I think he could also get like three or four rebounds per game. Maybe we'll go, he could average like 12, four, and three or something like that. I can see him having that overall stat line that really helps him propel him to the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. If realistically, if he wants to win Big Ten Freshman of the Year, which I think he will, I think he'll have to get up to like 14 points, but I think he absolutely has the ability to do that. Depends on how much we put the ball into his hand. And I'm not the only one that thinks he has the chance to be one of the best freshmen in the country in the Big Ten Freshman of the Year. The Athletic ranked him as the 11th ranked freshman in the country behind big time, huge time recruits like Isaiah Collier at USC and all the top guys, all those five star guys you see if you look up. Um, 2023 basketball rankings, all those five-star guys, Deshaun Harris-Smith is right there with them. Obviously, he was a really high four-star, still a blue-chip prospect for the Terps, but overall, he wasn't technically a five-star. He was the number 32-ranked player in the country, but a lot of people thought you could have given him that fifth star and he might end up, we might end up looking at him this year. I can see us looking at him this year and being like, he really was more of a five-star instead of a four-star. And if he wins Big Ten Freshman of the Year, that's what we're going to look at him as. And Kevin Willard, he seems to – the way that Kevin Willard is talking about Deshaun Harris-Smith makes me more on board about – the confidence I have in him competing at a high level in college basketball, competing with the physicality of the Big Ten. Kevin Willard sounds confident in him being one of the best freshmen in the Big Ten. Kevin Willard, this is what Kevin Willard said at Big Ten Media Day. He's the most physically gifted player I've ever coached. The 6'5", 215-pound freshman embraces contact with a college-ready body and has an incredible motor. He rebounds well from the guard spot and is more than a capable shooter. He's very good at attacking defenders downhill and coming off screens, Bass wrote. So Kevin Willard said Harris is the most physically gifted player he's ever coached. And then an analyst said... He does pretty much what I talked about. He has incredible motor. He rebounds the bell well for a guard spot, and he's more than a capable shooter, so he does everything well. So when Kevin Willard says he's the most physically gifted player I've ever coached, that would make, that's one of the reasons that get my wheels thinking, and I'm like, okay, this guy can definitely be the Big Ten Freshman of the Year, and I think he will be the Big Ten Freshman of the Year because if you look at basketball, it's a sport that's Big on traits. A lot of it's talent and your ability. Obviously, a lot of it's skill-based too. But if you don't have the talent and some of the tangibles that some of these guys, these God-given talents that some of these guys are born with, with in terms of explosiveness, in terms of quickness, in terms of strength, in terms of size, size is probably the biggest one. All that, all those things coming together makes you a Division One high-end Power Five recruit and. There are some guys that have it even more than other guys, and that's pretty much what Kevin Willard's saying about Deshaun Harris-Smith. The physicality of adjusting to the Big Ten level isn't going to be a problem that some of the other freshmen in the country might have, whether they're ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, whatever they are, SEC basketball, whatever the conference is, other freshmen might have trouble adjusting, and that might hold them back. They might need one or two years to get stronger, to get more physical to get a little bit more in their legs. They might need that, but Deshaun Harris-Smith already has that ability, and Kevin Willard speaks on it every day. And these aren't light words that Kevin Willard is saying. He's putting a clear expectation and a new high that he expects Deshaun Harris-Smith to be able to reach, saying that he's the most physically gifted player he's ever coached. So if he ends up being less than one of the best players Kevin Willard has ever coached, then – it's technically a disappointment. I mean, I'm I'm going to say it. Kevin Willard won't tell you that. But if the way he's talking about him and the expectations that Kevin Willard is putting on Deshaun Harris-Smith, you expect him to be the Big Ten freshman of the year. And with the athletic ranking him as the number 11 ranked freshman, you expect him to be 
one of the best players in the country. And even if he's not the Big Ten freshman of the year, which I only think there's like one guy that can beat him out for it, and it's this guy from Indiana that's actually a five-star player that was ranked in front of Deshaun Harris-Smith at the power four um, position. His name is McKenzie at Indiana. So look out for him when we play Indiana. That could be a battle for who wins Big Ten freshman of the year because McKenzie actually did receive the most votes um, in terms of preseason Big Ten freshman of the year, but obviously the game's not played in preseason. We got to play the actual games. That's why part of why I think Deshaun Harris Smith is ready to take that role as the Big Ten freshman of the year because McKenzie received like 20 votes, I want to say, while Deshaun Harris Smith was second in the votes and only received like five. And there's other good freshmen in the Big Ten. Don't get me wrong. There's a ton of highly talented recruits. A couple that Maryland have, and Jamie Kaiser and Jonathan. Both guys that are going to put up big minutes. Jamie Kaiser might average more points than Deshaun Harris Smith. That's a possibility. But overall, what I think Deshaun Harris Smith brings and that toughness and the scoring ability and all that versatility that Deshaun Smith Deshaun Harris Smith has, I think he will win Big Ten Freshman of the Year. But we'll see what happens. Next, we're going to talk about the Maryland defensive line needs to, and I think they can hit another level down the stretch. We'll talk about that after this ad from BetterHelp and FanDuel. This show is brought to you by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life. So you can move forward with confidence and excitement. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnCollege today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnCollege. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over, under, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. The Terps defensive line needs to and can take a whole nother step in the second half of the season. I think over the last two weeks, I've watched a really good looking Maryland defensive line. And I think going into these next weeks down the stretch and the teams that we play and everything, I think they can take a next step. And I think they absolutely need to take a next step if we want to win games down the stretch and win maybe a game that we're not supposed to win. I want to start with Donnell Brown. He has played like one of the best defenders on their team, one of the best defenders in the Big Ten, I'll say. In the last couple of weeks, he's had two sacks in each game. And we know before the last couple of weeks, he had two interceptions too. So overall, he's just creating plays, but he has some really good pass rushing moves in terms of hand usage. He looks really good coming off the edge at times. Doesn't look like he's never played Big Ten football before coming from St. Francis. He looks like he's been in the Big Ten a while and he's been coached really good. I would, I'm curious to know who the St. Francis defense the line coaches because obviously Donnell Brown has learned from a really good coach with the hand usage he has had but I think he's played really well and my point is he's taken another step these last two weeks having two sacks and I expect him to continue to grow and continue to get better now that he's used to the Big Ten and I think he'll take another step in the next couple of weeks and turn into a really overall good player for the Terps and turn into that elite level pass rusher. I don't know if it'll be elite level, but he'll be a really good pass rusher these last couple of weeks. And what we've seen these last couple or these next couple of weeks, I expect him to take a, a huge, another jump and 
continue on that sack trend and continue creating pass rush. He's done it multiple times, and I expect him to continue to get better and continue to do that in the coming weeks. And then also, Kellen Wyatt. Wyatt looks really good. I said before the season, Kellen Wyatt, if our defense wants to be successful on the defensive line, Wyatt needs to take a freshman to sophomore leap. He played a ton as a freshman. A lot of people didn't talk about him, but a lot of people li like to talk about Jay Sean Barham because of what he was doing as a freshman. But Kellen Wyatt was also playing among the defensive line as a freshman and was doing it pretty effectively his freshman year. It wasn't anything crazy. He's already passed the sack total this year with 3.5. And similar to Donnell Brown, he's turned up the pass rush in the last three weeks. He's had a sack each of the last three games. So I'm looking at the combination of Kellen Wyatt and Donald Brown have played super well these last three weeks. So I'm thinking that they can take a whole nother step after this bye, after they get a break, after they get a chance to catch their breath. I think those two edges, and then you got to um, throw Quishon Fuller into the mix. I think those three guys can allow our defensive line to take on a whole new level on the last in the next couple of weeks in a level that I don't know. I expected our defensive line to be able to hit. I don't know if they're going to hit it. I'm not hundred percent sure, but I do think we have all the talent and capabilities to be able to hit that um, next mark in terms of pressure, in terms of getting to the quarterback, in terms of stopping the run in the, in the next, in the second half of the season. And then I also look at, Speaking of stopping the run, how well we stopped the run. Illinois, despite beating us, they couldn't really run the ball against us really well. They averaged 3.4 yards per carry. And we know what we forced Ohio State to do. We forced Ohio State to be one-dimensional. Ohio State couldn't run the ball at all against us. Kyle McCord had to win that game. Marvin Harrison had to win that game. We forced Ohio State to throw the ball because they weren't going to beat us running the ball against our defensive line. So give credit to Jordan Phillips. Give credit to King Basote. Give credit to all those guys, Trey Colbert, Isaac Bunyan. All those guys have played really well, and they've taken on another level in terms of stopping the run. Coming into the season, I didn't think our defensive line could be this good in terms of pass rush and stopping the run. But I've seen flashes. It hasn't been on every second. Teams have broken big runs. Teams have had a lot of time to throw. It hasn't been on every second. But I see the talent and I see a lot of production that I didn't expect at a pretty high rate. Then I'm thinking now our defensive line can take another step going into these last couple of weeks of the season in the last half, a little bit of a less than a half of the season left, and hopefully going into a big bowl game. I think our defensive line has turned into a moderately a strength of the team. I thought our secondary was the best unit, and it is still, and our linebacker room is really awesome, but the defensive line has turned into a major strength. And the reason I say they need to continue to take another step is because – we play the two best running teams in the Big Ten Conference these coming weeks in Penn State and Michigan in the last half of the season. I don't think we're going to beat those teams. I'm honest. I don't think we're going to win those games. But if we want any chance at beating those guys, it's going to have to be our defensive line stopping the run like they did against Ohio State and we know Penn State has Singleton they have Allen and those two sophomore backs wow they're hard to stop we're going to see them against um play Ohio State this weekend Penn State versus Ohio State is going to be a big game I'm going to be watching that to see how Maryland can potentially put in some things to beat Penn State maybe and so that's going to be a big game so we'll see how well those running backs fare against Ohio State but in terms of Michigan, also Corm and Edwards, those two are the best as they get. So Penn State and Michigan probably have the two best running back duos, not only in just the conference, but in the whole country. So we're going to need them to continue, our defensive line to continue to play the way they have in terms of stopping the run. And then we're going to need Kellen White and Donald Brown to get some pressure on every quarterback that we play. And so I think that that's why I say that I think we 
absolutely can take another step in terms of our defensive line, in terms of how well they've been playing. And I think they can take another step into another level. And then I also say we absolutely need to take another step if we're going to want to compete against a Michigan, against a Penn State, or anybody else on our schedule if we want to make sure that we win those games overall. A Maryland recruit just made a big-time announcement on their recruiting. We'll talk about that after this ad from Bird Dogs. Bird Dogs makes you look good. Bird Dogs stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. Bird Dogs fix this issue by inventing cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college or, or enter promo code locked on college for a free white tech hat with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college or promo code locked on college for a free white tech hat. You won't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you. A Maryland recruit made huge news that I don't think enough people are talking about. I'm talking about Brandon Jacob, the four-star safety, who had some very important news to say on Twitter. And Brandon, for you, for those of you who don't know, is our highest rated, rated recruit in the 2024 class. Four-star safety, 6'2", lengthy, can run, and is going to be a huge impact player for the Terps down the road. I think he has a chance to be one of the best Maryland safeties in a while in terms of he can be as good as Bo Bray can be. He can be as good as Dante and maybe even pass that ability. He has some rare traits and speed and athleticism that you don't see every day. So I think he can be one of the best Maryland safeties we've seen. And then also, I think he can be one of the best defenders on the Maryland team in terms of the safety position. And I think it was extremely important for us to be able to get this guy, even though I haven't even said what he's announced yet. Let me say what he said first. He said he 100% has closed his recruitment down and that he is 100% a Maryland Terrapin. Obviously, he was committed, but we've seen players flip. We saw a linebacker we had flip to Alabama. We've seen many Maryland players flip away. And honestly... In my mind, I was kind of thinking that there was a chance Brandon Jacob was going to flip because I knew he was a super highly ranked recruit. He's ranked in, let me get you the exact number. He's ranked as a 231 ranked player on 247 and the 24th ranked safety had offers from everywhere. So I know that other coaches were reaching out to him and everything. And for him to say that he's completely shut down his recruitment, thank you to all the other coaches, but he's 100% saying a Terp, I think that's huge news because I think there was a possibility that he was thinking that maybe he could flip or maybe he'll go somewhere else because he is from Florida. So this isn't like a DMV guy who's staying home. Maryland does get a good bit of guys from Florida, but this isn't like I said, a guy that was from the Maryland area or from the D.C. area. This guy's a Florida guy, so it wasn't like he was locked into the Terps. So for the fact that he's staying and for him to be the highest-ranked recruit in the 2024 class is huge news because that rubs off on other guys in terms of in our 2025 class. I, I have high expectations for our 2025 class. I think our 2025 class can be – a really good class. I think it can be elite. There's a ton of DMV players like every year, but there's so many DMV guys that Maryland has the potential at getting. And I'm looking at Brandon Jacobs as a guy that you look at and say, oh, he just went there and he's a four star. He, I want to follow in his footsteps and go to Maryland and stay home and do that. Or a guy maybe from Florida, he can convince to come over to the Terps. You never know what an effect of a four-star, highly-ranked safety can have on other guys in terms of recruiting. And also, Brandon Jacob, most of all, is just an awesome player. And we're not going to have Bo Braid and Dante Trader forever now. They're going to be gone. Bo Braid's going to be gone next year. Dante will be gone in two years. 
we need to continue to replenish and replace. That's what the top teams do, and that's exactly what will happen with Brandon Jacobs. Thank you for listening to Locked on Terps. Please like and subscribe. We'll be here every day talking about Maryland football, basketball, whatever it is, we got you. So please like and subscribe, especially all you basketball fans will be ramping up the basketball. We've already been ramping it up a good bit, but the basketball season is coming soon. So make sure you like and subscribe for that. But we'll also be finishing out the football season. We still got a good chunk of it. Maryland's in good position to get a bowl game. So like and subscribe to join the Locked on Terps family. But again, thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.